I'm up here on a third story balcony. Well, we want to see how gravity affects objects of different masses. We know that when gravity acts on an object, and that's the only thing acting on it, we say that object is in free fall. Well, let's compare the free fall motions of two objects of different mass. Now, I'm going to drop a basketball and a tennis ball at the count of three. But before I do, I want you to make a prediction. Which ball will hit the ground first? All right, got your prediction? Here we go. One, two, three. Cool! From my perspective, they seem to both hit the ground at the same time. Okay, man, woo! -hoo! That came out great! I mean, really, that came out great. I hope you have an understanding of the impact that this value right here has on objects in free fall. We experimentally showed it and we explained it. Now, when I jumped, I jumped straight up. My motion was in a straight line, which is one dimensional motion. And we've already defined four equations of motion that allow us to specifically communicate motion in a straight line. Well, when we jump vertically, we know that gravity affects us in that line. So basically, this is a given all the time when the object is in free fall. So, remember our definition of free fall, it's when motion is under the effect of gravity alone. Now, to be realistic here, we are going to communicate that air resistance is negligible. Negligible. Is negligible. We're not saying air resistance doesn't occur. We're not saying it doesn't exist. We're just saying that it has very little impact on the motion if or when the object is nowhere near its terminal velocity or its maximum speed in the air. Now, we'll cover terminal velocity in a lesson further down. But this statement right here will allow us to use and treat objects to be in free fall under the effect of gravity alone if we accept the fact that there's going to be little, if any, air resistance, period. So this is about as close as we can get to an ideal circumstance or dropping things on the moon where the atmosphere is technically a vacuum. All right, well, let's identify our four equations of motion and show how gravity plays a role in those motions. So let's go over here and do a little bit of erasing. Oh, it's killing me to erase all this goodness. Super experiment. Okay, our four equations of motion. Equation number one was VF plus VI plus A delta t. Equation two, delta d equals one half vi plus vf delta t. Three, which we use to define our experiment or help us interpret our experiment, is vi delta t plus one half a delta t squared. And equation number four, was vs squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta d. All right, we have our four equations of motion. These four equations of motion were developed from horizontal linear motion. But we've been jumping in the vertical sense, which is also motion in a straight line. And so all of these still apply. Now, the cool part is, we now know that when we are in free fall, the acceleration due to gravity will be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so, in effect, we can substitute this a sub g in anywhere that 
there is an A. Any one of these three places has an acceleration in it. And when we're talking about vertical motion or free fall motion, we have right off the bat a given. That makes free fall motion really simple to consider because we always know at least one thing from the motion. Well, this was an extremely powerful lesson and we addressed the four uh, questions that we set up in the introduction. So I am just really excited. We have our four equations of motion and we now know how gravity affects free fall motion.